What's up guys, welcome to another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Character Profiles. This week we're doing the original series and we're doing Valon. So first up in the English is known as Valon. In the Japanese it's pretty much the same. His age, I'd put him between 17 and 20 years old. Maybe the same age as Joey Wheeler, possibly. His anime debut was in Yu-Gi-Oh! Episode 145, A New Evil Part 1. Here are his wins, here are his losses and here's his dual score. So, Valon is a character that appeared in the Waking the Dragons arc of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters series. The big bad boss of that season was Darts. He was the master of the Orichalcos who planned to return the legendary Great Leviathan into the world. Through Darts' machinations, Valon becomes one of his most trusted duelists, alongside two others, Alistair and Raphael. These characters serve as the main antagonists throughout the season, with each one being paired with a rival to one of the three main characters who wield the legendary dragons. For instance, Valon is paired with Joey, Raphael is paired with Yugi, and Alistair is paired with Kaiba. In terms of his associates, Valon seems to get on quite well with Raphael. However, he tends to argue quite frequently with Alistair, typically over each one's motives to go after their targets. One of Valon's biggest contributions to the arc is that not only was he able to defeat Mai Valentine in a duel, but he was also responsible for leading Mai over to darts and causing her to become an antagonist throughout most of the season. Valon is typically dressed as a biker, wearing the classic biker jacket with accompanying padding, as well as goggles and gloves. He wears his Orichalco stone on a ring on his middle finger. Balon has crystal blue eyes as well as dark brown hair that is styled in a way that it flares out in all directions. Design-wise, Valon does have some physical similarities to Joey Wheeler. Personally, I think that he looks a little bit more like an older Jaden Yuki, really. How about an older brother of Jaden, maybe? Might start my own fanfic with that. Now, Valon's voice. Uh, I should take a second here, guys, just to ask you if you are familiar with accents in the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime. If you are, then you may know that the dub doesn't do the best job of doing them. For instance, we are led to believe that both Bakura and Jack Atlas are English, or at the very least, that is what is implied based on their awful British accents. You heard your better half, you fiend. Now prepare for a one-way trip to the Shadow Realm. <laughs> you know what people are saying? That you got what it takes to be the best. But we both know that's not true, don't we, you say? Bakura, hey, over here! I baked this for you. Yes, there's just something about that accent. Yugi! However, I want to say that I think Valon takes the cake in terms of bad dubs, because when you listen to Valon talk, you may think that he sounds a little bit, well, Australian. Oh, give the girl a break, will ya? She still knew it all this, mate. Plus, she's kind of cute when she gets mad, don't you think? Uh, no. Well, it turns out that this was supposed to be a Cockney English accent. It's... It's just really badly done. <laughs> anyway, that's all I wanted to say about the uh, the accents in Yu-Gi-Oh. Let me know what you think of them anyway, but uh, yeah, just wanted to mention it. Valon's name is of Albanian origin. It translates to seething, which means a person that is filled with intense but unexpressed anger. This is perfect as it reflects Valon's backstory. As a child, Valon was an orphan under the care of a kind nun. He is seen getting into fights quite often and seemingly enjoying the challenge. One day, a group of thugs enter the church where Valon was living. They tell the nun that their boss has brought the church and they must leave. Valon throws a punch at one of the thugs, but the nun, smiling, grabs his wrist and shakes her head, telling him not to. That night, a fire is started at the church. Valon spots the thugs laughing about it. It is assumed that the nun was inside the church whilst it was on fire. Valon seeks out the thugs, enraged, believing it was them that had set the church on fire. He eventually finds them in an alleyway. He is next seen holding a length of pipe, the bodies of the thugs on the ground beneath him. It is uncertain whether he killed them or not, as they have been briefly seen in later scenes. Now, if you figure that this entire sequence seems unfamiliar, well, it's because it was cut entirely from the English dub. After this, Valon is taken to prison for his actions, where he gets into even more fights. Eventually, he is taken to the Warden, who tells him that he will let him leave if he defeats all the other prisoners on an island using the Seal of Orichalcos. Obviously, the Warden was working for darts. 
Fallon defeats them all. He is then approached by Darts and offered to work for him, which Valon accepts. Unknown to Valon, though, was the fact that Darts was actually the one who had burnt down the church. Later in the series, Valon falls in love with Mai, despite the fact that she does not return those feelings as strongly to him. Partly out of jealousy and partly to help Mai get over her past, Valon duels Joey Wheeler, who Mai fought fondly of. In their duel, both Joey and Valon gain immense respect for one another, each seeing the other's devotion to protecting Mai. In the final clash of the duel, Valon's focus wavers when Mai, knocked off her feet by the explosion from the attacks colliding, looks at the grappling opponents and calls out Joey's name. Once Valon loses, he drops to one knee in exhaustion and remains conscious just long enough to entrust Joey with rescuing Mai from her own fears. He then collapses and the seal takes his soul. After Darts is defeated at the end of the season, Valon wakes up in a seaside house. It is here that he spots that Mai had left him one of her Cyber Harpy cards. What a tease. Valon utilizes quite a unique deck focused around armor cards. He summons the monsters and then they become equipped to his body as power armor. His duels tend to be quite personal and brutal, as he is the one attacking his opponents rather than his monsters. This also reflects his youth, as he enjoyed fighting throughout his life. It's only fitting that he does it in his card games as well. His armor cards may lack attack power, but they do have some powerful effects to compensate. The card Armor Gravitation is utilized in the deck to special summon multiple pieces of the armor at once. The seal of Orichalcos itself is critical to Valon's deck, as it boosts the strength of his armor cards and allows him to summon more of them to make his suit of armor more powerful with additional effects. All of the monsters included in his deck are Active Guard, Advanced Shield, Big Bang Blow, Black Hole Shield, Burning Knuckle, Buster Knuckle, Buster Pile, Double Cloth Armor, Jet Gauntlet, Over Boost, Psychic Armor Head, Trap Buster, and we might as well mention one of his signature cards, the Seal of Orichalcos. And with that, guys, that's another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Character Profiles done. Let me know what you thought in the comment section below. What do you think of Valon in the Yu-Gi-Oh! series? What did you think of his accent? And what did you think of his backstory? Let me know in the comment section below. But other than that, guys, thanks for watching. Catch you later.